Hello Cinematech Geeks. Today I have a video on lenses and what's going on with lenses in the old cinema projectors and on DCI. Now, on this table I have a range of cinema lenses. One of them's a DCI lens. Take a guess. You're right, it's this monster one here. Anyway, I'll take a closer look and we'll have a look at the lenses and more what they're, what they're used for. Okay, here we go. This is a DCI lens for a Christie projector. Uh, this has actually come out of a ZX. Um, as you can see, it's quite a monster. But let's quickly have a look at what the differences are. Out of a traditional projector, we have these little prime lenses. Traditionally, these are about $2,000 each, uh, and these are what go on the front of a traditional film projector. Now, we have two requirements for that. Of course, you have the prime uh, with going out uh, to the screen, but obviously, commonly used, these are some uh, budget-based anamorphic lenses. So if we push through there, you can actually see everything's a bit squashed. Oops. So we have anamorphic lenses and usually you, you would pop a prime on the on the front and the anamorphic there and uh, that's how you would have uh, both lenses on this on a normal film projector and commonly using what I've got over here which is a turret now this attaches to the front of a projector and can mechanically twist here replacing for example the flat with the anamorphic so you basically have two primes and one does have an anamorphic and one does not and you switch between your wide screen and your scope and this can also you can see here it actually can be clicked and slid out slided out from in front of the um, light source etc now it's very interesting these are quite expensive units because moving these lenses day in and day out many times a day jarring them uh, these have to be quite well designed so they don't jar the lenses and of course uh, over time probably cause them some problems. Now in terms of uh, here we're an old old cinema we quite have a lot of these old well, these lenses laying around. Uh, one thing to note about these lenses is that they're a set focal length they have no zoom in them basically you buy the right lens for the right screen. This ensures that you have the least amount of glass and of course the best possible picture the more glass the more prob more possibilities of having uh, the glass causing errors to this to the picture etc so in general uh, for the best picture on screen you want the least amount of glass and that's why the cinema industry has been using this type of lenses and then of course we need our anamorphic this is a lens which is in a housing which would slide into a, a turret this is how you would mount them usually um, this is just a prime lens sitting in there. And before we get to the di digital, the big thing on everyone's um, topic now with uh, cinema, this is an old two Perth 3D lens. In the old days when they were doing some of the 3D on film, you would have uh, a typical four Perth film, um, bit of film and they would cut that in two and put an image on the top two perths and on the bottom two perths. It would then shine through here and you'd have the top two, the top image and the bottom image going through each of the red and the cyan filters to give you the two images on screen giving you the 3D effect. That's how they used to do it back in the film days when when uh, 3D was big, big, going big time back then. An interesting bit of history there. Here we have an example of a turret with a wide screen and an anamorphic lens mounted in it. At the moment the wide screen lens or the single um, the single prime lens is uh, being used and up above it is a prime lens with an anamorphic lens showing on the front there. This is quite an interesting turret as it pulls forward, it turns and then pulls back into position. A DCI lens um, is a little bit more dynamic. As you can see, it's a monster of a lens compared to traditional lenses. It's just a monster. But a DCI lens has a lot more requirements. 
for example, these this has a zoom in it to zoom between uh, a certain uh, ratio. Usually the zoom's used, for example, so you can zoom your image up. If you have um, side masking, you may need to zoom it between your scope and your and your flat. So your scope and your flat. So you can zoom it here. All the more recent lenses are all mechanical, and when you change channels on a DCI projector the lens will automatically refocus and reshape and move everywhere. Another issue is that on, you can see here the aperture is quite small, it's a little bit bigger here. Uh, the reason you want a bigger aperture is so lens shift etc, all the mechanical stuff. On the traditional projectors with these you don't have any of that, you've just got the sweet spot through the middle and you basically move the projector. But um, yes, as you can see, um, you know, these lenses are $10,000 compared to the $2,000. It's a big extra cost, but it gives you some more flexibility. Um, you know, the advances in cinema, some say it's probably a good idea or not. I, I actually wonder why we can't actually get one of these lenses close enough to a, to a DMD to actually give a, give it the typical type of result that we see with the old projectors. If anyone knows, I'd love to hear. Looking in this box, these are some old lenses from this theatre. Now one would ask, uh, how long does a lens last? Well, quite a long time, 20 to 30 years, but really the main reason why you would be moving to, to a new lens is because simply the advances in technology, lenses have gotten um, much, much better over the years, and so, so has film and film grain and film stock. So some of these old older lenses are basically just aren't up to it anymore, and they have been replaced with new ones. DCI and anamorphic. Why does DCI not support anamorphic presentations? Well, to tell you the truth, I'm not completely sure. But one would easily say that putting an anamorphic lens in front of this monster would probably cost a hell of a lot of money, considering this lens is already a $10,000 lens. An anamorphic lens to cover this, this aperture would also be considerably expensive as well. Of course, the larger the bit of glass, the harder it is to make. And as you can see in some of these older anamorphic lenses, these aren't even as good as some of the newer ones. This is quite a, uh, an expensive anamorphic lens. They're, they're a lot smaller. So um, my main, uh, I mainly suspect that anamorphic is not su supported in DCIs because it's basically too expensive. And making anamorphic lenses that can supply lenses this size is quite hard and is more likely to introduce um, problems on the screen than not.